welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the energy changes in physical and chemical processes and specifically we are going to look to be looking at enthalpy of solution. So we we'll look at what enthalpy of solution entails and then we also do a few practice questions. So molar enthalpy of solution is the heat change when one mole of a substance is dissolved in a stated amount of solvent, that is water. So one mole of a substance, in this case, we can have a solid dissolved in water or we can have a solution dissolved in water. So if it's solid dissolved in water, we'll take the mass of the water. If it's a solution being dissolved in water, we'll take the both masses or both volumes when you're doing our calculation. Alternatively, it's the heat change when one mole of a substance dissolved in water to give infinitely dilute solution, which this is a solution which, no, which shows no change in its property when water is added. So let's do a few questions that will help us to understand how to tackle enthalpy of solution calculations. So as I said earlier, if you have a solid being dissolved in water, we only consider the mass of solution and the mass of the water. So let's see, we have been given uh, 16 grams of ammonium nitrate was dissolved in 100 centimeters cubed of water at 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the solution drops. So if it drops, it tells you that it's endothermic to 19 degrees Celsius. Calculate the molar enthalpy of solution of ammonium nitrate is the enthalpy change exothermic or endothermic and then you give a reason. So let's look at the first part of the question and see what we have. First of all we have the mass of the solution. I said in this case it's going only to be the mass of the water. Since our ammonium nitrate is in solid state we do not take the 16 grams we only take the mass of the water so this is going to be 100 grams as we said you convert using one uh, grams per centimeter cubed so next we look at the change in temperature in this case the change of temperature was initially was 25 degrees celsius and finally was 19. so it's supposed to be the other way around it's supposed to be 19 minus 25 we'll get a negative value but we do not use that negative value in our calculation so you're going to get a six degrees celsius supposed to be negative six but remember the negative tells you there is a drop so it just helps you to know if it's exothermic or endothermic do not use the negative so the change is six is six degrees and then the specific heat capacity I've been given is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So that tells you we need to convert our mass into kilogram, which is the same as 100 divided by 1000, which gives us 0 0.1 kilograms. So the change in heat is going to be the specific heat capacity, which is 4.2, times the mass of the solution, which is 0 0.1, times temperature change, which is 6, which gives us 2.52, and it is kilojoules. And then, so we are, we are able to calculate the change, but now in this question, you have been told molar. So we need to know the moles of the ammonium nitrate that took part in the reaction. So moles is equals to mass over molar mass. So we have the mass of ammonium nitrate as 16 grams. The molar mass is we have two nitrogen that is 14 times 2 plus 4 hydrogen 1 times 4 plus uh, 3 oxygen which is 16 times 3 which gives us 80. So it is 16 divide by 80 which gives us the moles of 0 0.2 moles so we say 0 0.2 moles produces 2.52 kilojoules of heat so what about one mole so we cross multiply which gives us 2.52 divided by 0 0.2 which gives us 12.6 this is now kilojoules per mole and remember we said this reaction is endothermic so your answer should be positive and then part b of the question is tells if it's exothermic or endothermic we said it is endothermic 
stasis because heat is absorbed from the surrounding causing a temp uh, causing a temperature drop that's it so let's do another question so when 9.8 grams of sulfuric acid was dissolved in 100 ml of distilled water so as you can see from this question you notice that now this is in solution and we are dissolving in another solution so the first thing if you were to calculate the mass of solution it's going to be 100 plus 98 which will give us one uh not 9.8 9.8 which will give us 109.8 grams so let's note that this is different from the solid one and then the final temperature recorded was 28 24.0 degrees celsius higher than that of room temperature so it means there's a specific temperature that we had it rose and the change was 24 degrees celsius so the temperature change was 24 degrees celsius and then uh, given that the density of water is one gram per centimeter cubed and the specific heat capacity is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per kelvin uh, so it means we have to divide this to uh, with a thousand to get in 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 kilograms so this gives us 0 0.0 0 0.1098 kilograms so if you were to calculate the enthalpy of solution and then draw the energy level so the 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 heat change or enthalpy is going to be specific heat capacity times temperature change times the mass of the solution which is the same as 4.2 times 24 times the mass now is 0 0.1098 kilograms which gives us 11.068 kilojoules and then you have been told we have to get the molar enthalpy so this is going to be moles of the acid uh, which is the same as the mass of the acid of a molecular mass we have given that the mass was 9.8 grams that was used and the molar mass is going to be for sulfuric acid which is h2so4 which is 1 times 2 plus 32 plus 16 times 4, which is the atomic masses, which gives us 98. So it's 9.8 divided by 98, which will give us 0 0.1 moles. So 0 0.1 moles produces 11.068 kilojoules of heat. So what about one mole? So it is 11.068 divided by 0 0.1, which gives us a 110.68 kilojoules per mole. And remember, we were told that the final temperature recorded was higher than the room temperature. So there was an increase in temperature, which tells you that it's an exothermic reaction. So when we were to draw the energy level diagram, we are going to have the uh, change, energy change on the y-axis and then reaction path on the x-axis. So this is going to be reaction path and then this is going to be uh, change that is energy change. So we will start, since it's an exothermic reaction, it tells you that the reactants will be at higher uh, uh, energy than the product. So the reactor will be here, which is sulfuric acid, aqueous, uh, 
plus water liquid and then it's going to go down to form product which is H2SO4 aqueous. So you write the heat change or the molar heat which is negative 110.68 kilojoules per mole. Always indicate that. So that's how you draw the energy level diagram like that. So, so this brings us to the end of enthalpy of solution. So see you in the next lesson as you do another enthalpy.